We're now going to use the chain rule to clarify what's going on with implicit partial differentiation. Now we saw implicit partial differentiation before, but the method I showed you doesn't work in all cases, and it might have been a little confusing. So now, now let's use the chain rule to clarify how this works in general. So suppose that z is a function of x and y, which is defined implicitly by an equation of the form capital F of x, y, z equals zero. And here, capital F is a differentiable function of three variables. And we want to find the partial derivatives of z with respect to x and y. So let's write down this equation a little more carefully. So we'll write it as capital F of x comma y comma z of x y equals zero. So here this is an equation of functions of x and y. Okay so in general capital F is a function of three variables, but here I'm only taking z to be z of x, y, and so this now becomes an equation of x and y, the functions of x and y. So this is as functions of x and y. Okay, and now we're going to differentiate this equation with respect to d by dx. So we're going to apply the operator d by dx to this equation. And the chain rule says that since capital F depends on three variables, we're going to get three terms. The first term is partial f, partial x, partial x, partial x. And the second term is partial f, partial y, partial y, partial x. And the third term is partial f, partial z, partial z, partial x. So that's the left-hand side of this equation, and the right-hand side is the partial derivative of zero with respect to x, which of course is zero. Now let's look at what we've got here. So partial x, partial x is equal to one, and partial y, partial x, is equal to zero. So we can cross this out. And partial z partial x, well normally if we were thinking about functions of x, y, and z it would be zero. But here we're regarding z as a function of x and y defined by the implicit equation. So this is not necessarily zero, this is what we want to solve for. Okay, so we can now solve for this by moving it to the other side and dividing by partial f partial z and we get that partial z partial x equals minus partial f partial x over partial f partial z. Now of course we can only do this if partial f partial z is not equal to zero. So if partial f partial z is not equal to zero, then we get this equation. And we can similarly differentiate everything with respect to y and solve for dz dy, and we get partial z partial y equals minus partial f partial y over partial f, partial z. Now, if you're being very careful here, you might remember that the chain rule assumes that all of the functions involved are differentiable. So to apply the chain rule, we need to know that z is a differentiable function of x and y. And how do we know that? So how do we know 
that z is a differentiable function of x and y. So that question is answered by what's called the implicit function theorem. So here's what it says, implicit function theorem. So suppose that capital F is a differentiable function of x, y, and z. Now, suppose that capital F of x0, y0, z0, so we're evaluating this function at some particular point, x0, y0, z0, suppose it's 0, and suppose that partial f, partial z at this point is not 0. Then we know two useful things. So first of all, we can solve the equation, so we can solve f of x, y, z, z equals 0 for z as a function of x and y. When x, y is close to x0, y0. Then this will give a z close to z0. So the mathematically precise statement of this has some deltas and epsilons in it. I'll just leave it like this to give you the idea. And the second is that z is a differentiable function of x and y. Um, so as long as the partial derivative of f with respect to z is not zero, you're in good shape. Um, and what, what's the idea here? Well, so here's, here's the surface. Where f of x, y, z equals zero. And here's the point x zero, y zero, z zero. Now, suppose you move to some nearby point. So you, you replace x0 and y0 by some x and y. So this is, say, x, y, z0. And now you're lo no longer on this surface, and you want to be able to move z upwards to get back onto the surface where capital F is equal to 0. So if we draw a vertical line through this point here, the thing is that the partial derivative of f with respect to z is not 0. So even though at this point f is not equal to 0, since the partial derivative of f with respect to z is not 0, that means we can change the value of f by moving up and down along this line. Um, so that allows us to move back to some point x, y, z, where f is actually equal to 0. That's the basic idea. Anyway, the thing to remember is that as long as partial f partial z is not equal to 0, which is what you need for these equations to make sense, then z really is a differentiable function of x and y.